David, I've been writing about index investing now for over seven years. And for the last three years, I've had the opportunity to work closely with clients and help them actually build portfolios that they can manage on their own. And over that time, I've come to understand that success in investing has more to do with discipline and consistency than it does with the actual selection of individual investments. So that's why I don't agree that active investing offers a superior opportunity to achieve better performance. The problem is simply that very few people, and it doesn't matter how intelligent or how experienced they are, are simply very wise when it comes to choosing investments. More often we give way to our emotion. We chase performance. We get attached to individual stocks. We focus on rewards and we ignore risk. We make forecasts that we know are unreliable. And above all, we're overconfident in what we do and we pay the price for that overconfidence in the form of lower returns. So that's why I feel the only, that the true wise choice is to accept that the best investment strategy is simply to try to embrace market returns at the lowest possible cost. And that means a passive investing strategy. The objective of active investing is to try to outperform the market over the long term. Uh, while that's not easy to do, I believe moderately sophisticated investors stand a likely chance of achieving that goal if they approach the task wisely. Of course, you have to be able to identify uh, in advance investments that are likely to outperform. Uh, I believe you can, provided you do uh, three key things. Firstly, you need to be highly selective in choosing investments. You have to look for mutual funds or money managers with a proven track, track record, and that really means 10 years or longer, uh, which uh, continue to follow a disciplined and, and distinct process of investing for the long term. And you, and you have to avoid closet indexers, uh, which track the indices closely, since passive investing will achieve similar results um, at much lower cost. Secondly, you need to select those investments as part of an appropriate asset allocation that doesn't try to time the market. And thirdly, you need to pay no more than reasonable investment fees. So if you can do those three things, I believe your chances of outperforming are pretty good. Overall, to me, active investing allows you the freedom to choose a distinct investing approach with a particular combination of risk and reward that, that best suits your needs. The proponents of active investing often make it sound simple. It's just a matter of choosing investments wisely. It's a matter of buying the good stocks and avoiding the bad ones. Well, I always like to remind people that if it were as easy as it sounds, there would be more people who were doing it successfully. And there's ample evidence that not only do most mutual funds underperform the market, but also most individual investors who buy those funds. A mutual fund's track record, even if it is 10 years or longer, is not a reliable predictor of future outperformance. And there's many reasons for that. Successful managers get new jobs and change funds. Sometimes successful funds attract so many new assets that they lose that nimble uh, ability to take advantage of opportunities. And sometimes outperformance, even over reasonably long periods, is nothing more than dumb luck that can't be repeated. It's true many active funds look good in hindsight, and it would be great if we could go back in time and purchase those. But so far, no one has come up with a reliable indicator of which funds will outperform in the future. But what we do know is the most reliable uh, indicator of a mutual fund's performance is its cost. And so it makes sense to take that to its logical conclusion and simply buy the mutual funds with the lowest possible costs. And those are inevitably index funds and ETFs. Uh, Dan, I, I agree uh, that uh, with you that uh, investors are generally susceptible to behavioral shortcomings. But I, I draw a really different conclusion from that. Uh, to me, the market is essentially the, the sum of individual behaviors, so it really reflects these behavioral shortcomings. That's why, to me, hot stocks can get overvalued at certain times, while less popular stocks uh, might be undervalued. So to me, the astute active investor needs to steer clear of those behavioral traps as much as possible. Instead, they should be following a dispassionate uh, long-term approach of selecting investments that cost less than a realistic assessment of their long-term value. The smart active investor also needs to stick to an appropriate asset allocation and pay only reasonable uh, investment fees. So I agree with you that discipline and fees are important. I agree uh, all this is not easy to do, uh, whether you're doing it on your own or with, uh, with an advisor, and many investors aren't up to the task. Um, uh, for them, I, I would agree with you, uh, 
they would be better off following the passive approach. But for those who can meet those requirements, um, I think they're well suited to active investing. investing. And uh, their chances of outperforming the, at the market are uh, really pretty good. So what are the odds that an active investor will outperform the market with a portfolio of actively managed funds? It's certainly not zero. It's far from it, in fact. And I don't mean to suggest that active investing is doomed to fail or that it's wrong for everyone, because we know that's not true. But let's remind ourselves of the question that we're debating today, and that is, does active investing offer superior performance for those who choose their investment wisely? Well, making wise choices uh, based on a good track record for a mutual fund or even low cost helps, of course, but I'm not sure that it actually puts the odds in your favor. We do know that the most sophisticated investors from pension funds to endowments to Warren Buffett himself have said that the strategy that is most likely to succeed for most people is index investing. Active investing isn't for everyone. Uh, most active investors in mutual funds underperform the market after fees, as, as you note, uh, Dan. So you won't uh, outperform passive investing if you're just doing what everybody else is doing. But active investing gives you the freedom to go your own way and select investments that offer the best combination of risk and rewards in a way that, that suits your particular needs. Um, and you need to be highly selective. Uh, you have to follow a disciplined approach and you need to only pay reasonable fees. But if you can do it properly, chances are good uh, that you'll outperform passive investing uh, in achieving your goals. Thank you.